We gather today on the eve of a historic anniversary to celebrate what happened here in this very hall 70 years ago when the United Nations declared to the modern world an ancient truth that the Jewish people have a natural, irrevocable right to an independent state in their ancestral and eternal homeland. Mr. Speaker, in these uncertain days, it's important that we cling to the permanent things and the ancient truths. Among them is the principle that fear is useless. What is needed is trust. As we prepare in the next hour to vote on H.R. 2975, the, the Patriot Act of 2001, uh, I rise as a proud member of the House Judiciary Committee to say this legislation is about trust. It is not about fear. It is about trusting the law enforcement authorities of this country with the powers, some temporary, some permanent, to stop those who would wage war on our citizens before they level the attacks. We do not bring this legislation to this floor in fear. We bring this legislation to the floor in trust. We trust in God. We trust in the governing authorities that our God has placed for such a time as this. I urge all of my colleagues to join me in strongly supporting the Patriot Act of 2001, and I yield back the balance of my time. Forsaking God, give us a king. And it came to pass when Samuel was old that he made his sons judges over Israel. Now the name of his firstborn was Joel, and the name of his second Abiah, and they were judges in Beersheba. And the sons walked not in his ways, but turned aside after lucre and took bribes and perverted judgment. Then all the elders of Israel gathered themselves together and came to Samuel and to Ramah, and said unto him, Behold, thou art old, and thy sons walk not in thy ways. Now make us a king to judge us like all the nations. But the thing displeased Samuel when they said, Give us a king to judge us. And Samuel prayed unto the Lord. And the Lord said unto Samuel, Hearken unto the voice of the people in all that they say unto thee. For they have not rejected thee, but they have rejected me, that I should not reign over them. According to all the works which they have done since the day that I brought them out of Egypt, even unto this day, wherewith they have forsaken me and served other gods, so do they also unto thee. Now therefore hearken unto their voice, howbeit yet protest solemnly unto them, and show them the manner of the king that shall reign over them. And Samuel told all the words of the Lord unto the people that asked of him a king. And he said, This will be the manner of the king that shall reign over you. He will take your sons and appoint them for himself, for his chariots, and to be his horsemen, and some shall run before his chariots. And he will appoint him captains over thousands, and captains over fifties, and will set them to ear his ground, and to reap his harvest, and to make his instruments of war, and instruments of his chariots. He will take your daughters to be confectionaries, and to be cooks, and to be bakers. And he will take your fields and your vineyards and your olive yards, even the best of them, and give them to his servants. And he will take the tenth of your seed and of your vineyard and give to his officers and to his servants. And he will take your men servants and your main servants and your godliest young men and your asses and put them to his Take the tenth of your sheep, and ye shall be his servants. And ye shall cry out in that day because of your king, which he shall have chosen you, and the Lord will not hear you in that day. 
Nevertheless, the people refused to obey the voice of Samuel, and they said, Nay, but we will have a king over us, that we may also be like all the nations, and that our king may judge us, and go out before us, and fight our battles. And Samuel heard all the words of the people, and he rehearsed them in the ears of the Lord. And the Lord said to Samuel, Hearken unto their voice, and make them a king. And Samuel said unto the men of Israel, Go ye every man unto his city.